Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, Wu Xiaoling Wan Room. Today we're going to continue to talk about Edgeworth's box. In particular, I want to talk about the algebra of equilibrium. So suppose we have an equilibrium price or a vector of price P1 star, P2 star, where the market clears. That means with price P1 star and P2 star, the amount of good one that Alice wants to sell is exactly equal to the amount of good one that Bob wants to buy. And at the same time, with this price vector, the amount of good two that Bob wants to sell is exactly equal to the amount of good two that Alice wants to buy. So the market clears. And uh, we can take a look at the uh, algebra under this equilibrium. So you can see um, in equation one, equation one just tells you that for this consumption bundle X um, to work, it must be feasible. So what does it mean by feasible? That means the gross demand of Alice for good one plus the gross demand of Bob for good one must be equal to the sum of the endowment of both Alice and Bob for good one. And same for good two, the total gross demand of good two from Alice and from Bob, summing them up must be equal to the sum of their initial endowment in good two. And I'm going to call that equation one, I'm going to call that equation two. Now I'm going to move everything from the right hand side to the left in equation one. So I'm not changing anything, I'm just moving omega a1, omega b1 to the left hand side of the equation. So you get equation one prime after I move these two terms to the left. And I'm going to do the same thing for equation two. And I'm going to call that equation two prime. And now I'm going to define excess demand or net demand as your final consumption minus your endowment. So for example, EA1 stands for the excess demand or net demand of Alice for good one. And that is equal to the final consumption of Alice for good one minus her initial endowment of good one. We call that the net demand or excess demand. Now, if your excess demand is greater than zero, that means you're a net demander of that good. But if your excess demand is negative, that means you're a net supplier of that good. And in our example, you could see that Alice ends up selling good one. So Alice um, has a negative excess demand for good one. And you can define the same thing for Bob. Now, we're going to sum up the excess demand for both of these consumers. So we call that aggregate excess demand. Now, aggregate excess demand for Alice and Bob for good one, notice that when you sum them up, it is going to be zero. How do I know that? Well, it's from your equation one prime. Notice your equation one prime. This guy is exactly equal to the excess demand of Alice of good one. And this term is actually equal to the excess demand of Bob for good one. So you sum them up, you get zero. And that's from your equation one prime. And sample equation two prime, it tells you that given this equilibrium price, your aggregate excess demand for good two is going to sum up to zero. So I hope this helps. Now that we know um, the algebra, we are ready for Warren's Law. I will see you next time. Hope this helps.